are absolutely delighted that for the first time since 2010, world-class snooker has returned here to Telford. And I tell you what, we are back with an absolute bang. Top 16 on the one-year list, going toe-to-toe -to -toe for one of our sport's ultimate titles. Welcome to the 2024 Johnson's Paint Players' Championship. <laughs> and what a way to start. Please welcome one of the finest sportsmen Scotland has ever produced. Winner of 31 ranking titles in all, and he's been in five semi-finals already this season. The one and only Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. And he won the second of his three UK titles right here in Telford. The omens are good then for China's finest. Enter the dragon, Ding Zheng Wei. Yeah. ...appearance in the Players' Championship. Last season's shootout champion, this season's Northern Ireland runner-up. Give it up for Chris Wakelin. to one of the outstanding performers of the current campaign. Four titles already this season. Brimming with confidence, brimming with belief. Here he comes with his own brand of naughty snooker. The ace in the pack, Judd Trump. <laughs> Is made to Chris Wakelin. This time last night, he didn't know whether he would be lining up Frank today. the first frame. Judge run to break. Now, though, Wakelin is here into the lion's den to take on Judd Trump. May I ask you to put the phones away now, please? Thank you. Our referee is Marcel Eckert. And this Players' Championship has officially begun. Yes, good evening, Phil. Good evening, everybody. It's great to be back here at the Telford International Centre. <laughs> Got a history here over the years. UK Championship, World Championship qualifiers. It's good to be back. Place. Well, I'm sure that man is delighted to be back. As you said, he had to sweat a little bit last night. Wasn't 100% sure, but another matchup against his nemesis, Judd Trump. Record yeah. doesn't look too good for Chris, does it? <laughs> no. 12 0 in favour of Trump. But look on the bright side for Wakelin. He ran him to 10 9 in the first round of the World Championship in 2018. Had a chance of the decider. And in this season's European Masters, Trump only won 5-4 when they met, having trailed 4-0. So, Wakelin has been very close to gaining the verdict, but as yet not able to do so. Just one final word on their headers. Wakelin hope, hoping that... Trump doesn't play like he did in the final of the Northern Ireland Open earlier this season. He beat Wakelin 9-3. ...that day, and two other breaks over 90. He was superb. I suppose he could always look on the bright side, Phil. He's going to beat him once at some stage. Open, but it's tonight. But he should trump. 
Well, he's having such an impressive season. Four tournaments already under his belt. Three other tournaments, he's reached the final. Really one of the dominant figures on the tournament calendar so far. But he's a good steady player, Chris Wakeley, now. You know, he sort of come with a couple of seasons. Won the shootout, of course, didn't he? And uh, on his day, he plays some really tidy snooker. Good all-round game. But that's not one of his best safety shots. Now, nearly chance for Trump and Red. Very nicely situated. And this is the kind of red early on, if you knock this in and your technique holds up. It's a good feeling. One. Didn't strike it of the best, but good enough. Yeah, it wasn't a clean strike, was it? Went in off the left-hand jaw as we looked. So he's not on this pink perfectly. Would have loved to be in a bit straighter on it. Cue ball running away from the Reds. Oh, I didn't Shot expect front. him to miss what? that. And that could be that could be a problem already. There's a lot of safety shots now. I was gonna drawing reds towards that right hand pocket in the pink. That's a cover, so not much pressure on the safety shots. right it's the natural tendency in this kind of situation for the reds to congregate around the high value color or the color that's over a top corner pocket While we're in this impasse, I've heard about the fact that Trump leads 12 nil in career meetings against Wakelin. Don't think he can make a, a fast buck betting Trump to win the match. He's one to six, a one to six favorite, miserly odds. Sports psychologists always say you should try and draw Positives from situations. Well, I think for Wakelin, a big positive. He's done so well just to qualify for this tournament. 129 players on the tour. He's one of the best 16 this season. And look at the players who aren't here, Ken. Defending champion Sean Murphy, Kyron Wilson, Luca Brassell, the world champion, former world champion Stuart Bingham, and Neil Robertson. Yeah, a very impressive list of... Great champions, love to be here. So yeah, I mean, this this match will be well. I've got a free shot here. Nobody expecting me to win. I'm get in at the last minute and I'll give it a go. Could be. Well, a lucky thirteen for Joe Trump. You never know. Yeah, good safety shot. It's not too bad, actually. That little flick on the brown. Well, covered all the reds down this left-hand side with the blue, as you can see, and a direct line with the, the outside of the, the pack. So off two cushions, trying to nestle into the back of it. I think, well, this may be a touching ball. It's pretty close, no touching ball called so yeah it's a little bit of a stalemate at the moment both players won't enjoy this and 
they may look at each other and say, OK, come on, let's re-rack them. Any other season right now, considering what he's achieved, Judd Trump would be regarded as the player of the season. He isn't because that's Ronnie O'Sullivan. And I'm led to believe he's upstairs practicing, getting ready for his match tomorrow night. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We have your re rack, please. No surprise here that a re rack is going to occur. It was always on the cards. As soon as the pink went over the pocket, Ken and I suggested that might happen. We had a match last week at the Welsh Open where we had two re racks before the first frame was played. It can happen. There's Ronnie O'Sullivan. The World Grand Prix champion. Form. Pretty much all season. I thought his semi-final against Ding up in Leicester at the World Grand Prix was one of the best performances we've ever seen from him. And he's come here clearly with intent. Yeah. And so him, even though he didn't participate at the Welsh Open last week, he was down there doing some TV work, but he was Doing a little bit of practice down there as well. So he's getting ready, treating this event with the greatest respect. No re-rack on table two. Why not pull out another device and watch both matches at the same time? This one is available on ITVX. John Higgins and Ding. First frame. A first round matchup that Jump underlines up. the quality of this tournament. It's funny how players, you could have played a pack there back into the bulk area, chose to, to play a containing safety shot. More straightforward shot, but not really sort of achieving any advantage. In fact, giving an advantage to Judd Trump, uh, giving him a free shot. They're trying to be too careful, <laughs> and it's worked against them. I don't think Chris Wakelin is going to be able to beat Judd Trump. The way he's playing, by playing too careful. Brando. I think he's got to just play an aggressive game against them because Trump is not going to make too many mistakes. And look at that for a split. Absolutely perfect. Five. When you go into the bunch like that, you deserve to be on a red. Six. Well, I didn't get the full. Can't he have to use a little bit of side? Look, yeah, see the side? He's just imparting on a little bit of side. Trying to switch it over. Get enough of the black. Is it in? Oh, got too much of it. Shot trump six. Swerved to too much. Chris Wakelin had a little look at that black. I'm not quite sure. Can he play on the black? He's going to play in the easy pink here. It's the pink here. Yeah, the black, it is potable, but it's quite tight to that left-hand cushion. So you, it's not like it's over the pocket where it could have been. So you may have to concentrate just on the pink for the time being. He'd love to get that black on its spot as soon as possible. Seven. 
exactly what I'm talking about, Phil. Chances like this, they don't come around too often, particularly when you're playing the elite players in the world. This is where he's got to really score heavy, try and lay down a marker to his opponent. Now, if he gives him a chance like this, that he's going to score and win the frame in one visit, so important, particularly at the beginning of the match. Not only to send 14. out that marker, but for his own confidence as well. Such an important visit this so early on. 15. Best known for winning the shootout and in the final there, under the most pressurised of circumstances with that shot clock. 22. Wonderful century to capture the title. He can score. He's had certain matches on tour where he scored brilliantly. Yeah, I mean, look at his cue action, the way he cues the ball. I mean, he's a lovely cue. It's nice and straight. He's got a nice setup. Keeps his head nice and still. See his back hand and nice and pit. Particular it is to the queue. Mm. He's got plenty of queue power as well. He's not lacking in that department. 29. So he has all the attributes. It's just the belief, maybe. Against the players on the TV. I mean, the run to the final of the Northern Ireland Open would have given him great confidence. And, of course, even winning the shootout, I know it's a one frame you're playing against the clock, but even just a victory like that, it's amazing what it could do for your confidence and your belief. Thirty-six. Yes, in Belfast on the way to... The climax of the tournament, he beat the likes of Sean Murphy, Jack Lasowski. Yeah, he's had some good skills. Well, what this would be, without doubt, his biggest one. Against Joe Trump, if he could 42. manage it. These two reds are nicely a plant into this left corner pocket. 43. Oh, not the way to play it. Should have really screwed left of the pink and play for the pink into the bottom right corner pocket now. Well, this is missable. So close to that red. He's got to be careful he doesn't foul the red even. Well, well played. Good shot, that. Certainly missable, but safely into the pocket. 49. He's looking at if he it's this red, can he go through the gap of the two reds left of the pink? Hit the for the blue. It's a very small window. Oh, he hit it off the black, and that will certainly. <laughs> well, that's a bonus. This is precisely the start he would have wanted. Fifty-six. 
56. Yes, cute ball has been very good so far. Make a nice big break, if not a century. Keep Jordan a seat. Wonderful start. 64. Very, very good indeed. Very impressive. Seventy-one. Seventy-two. Seventy-seven. Sharp into his stride. Seventy-eight. Bouncing back from a very disappointing defeat in the UK Championship first round to Ken Doherty. <laughs> yes, surprise. He's good, but he, now he's that good. <laughs> Eighty-five. Well, this is very impressive start. So important for him. Yeah, red is in, 86. so possibility now of a century, and what a start. Closing in on 1,000 centuries in professional competition. Chris Michaelin closing in on 100 centuries. 95. This would be 96th. 98. Wagland, great start. And I think the belief, well, it's certainly this start. Great shot in the pink. A wake up call for Jet Trump, administered by Chris Wakeley. That was pretty good. What a way to get underway. Fluency from two quarters so far here at the Telford International Centre. Second frame. Chris Wakeley to break. Chris Wakelin off to a century start and also dominating the first frame over on table two, John Higgins drawing first blood against Deng Wei. 88. Higgins began with a, a century of his own, 102, and if you want a multi-device, why not watch this one and over on RTVX, the table two action as well. Yeah, hit that break a little bit harder than he would have liked. He got his hand on the table here, Jord, but it's not straightforward if he decides to take this red on. It wouldn't surprise me if he refused it. He doesn't have a great angle. I'm not guaranteed to be on the black if he does pot it. May turn this down. I think it was the red was a bit straighter. There's no doubt he'd take it on, but just at the angle that he has. Well, he did take it on, but there you see, it was so dangerous. 
What another gifted chance for Chris Wakelin. Edgy start. And the big favourite. One. And if you're just joining, joining us in the first frame, Trump got in, but he tried to tweak in a black using side. Didn't work, and he spent the rest of the frame on the sidelines. And I wonder whether it's going to be a, a repeat here. Too early to call this a frame-winning chance just yet, Ken, but it's reasonable. Six. Well, just the way he started in the in the last frame with that wonderful century break, I mean, the reds are perfect here around the black and bottom of this pack Seven. here. I mean, he's got these that red. He's got the red that he's closest to. That will be his next choice. Yeah, so play the red closest to the cue ball, back into the same pocket as the black. Fourteen. Oh, he's got to he really want to be straight on this red. Now, what's he going to play here? Is he going to go and try and use the pack of reds, trying to bring some more in? Oh, he's played it nicely. Good shot. Twenty-two. Technically, he's very orthodox, Chris Wakelin. All the lines are in the right place. Wonderful. Pause on the backswing, then delivers the cue with authority. World number 23. Deep run here. And he could well establish a new personal best. He's highest ever ranking. Achieved last year, 21. The, all the other reds are sort of blocking each other around the black and the pink. So he's going to have to 31. play a little cannon into the reds here, you would feel. If he's got a nice angle on the brown, we saw the split that Trump got in the last frame, brown into the opposite corner pocket. But if he's got a nice angle here, could go into the left-hand side of the pack as we look. Be on a red into this left corner. Needs a bit of luck. Didn't hit them full. Oh, we could be snookered. Have a look at that. You see 25. the side just taking off that top cushion. In behind the black. Is he on this red? Must be so close. 25. Now watch the side as he hits the pack. He wanted a fuller contact, got through the gap. Now watch the side just take. And behind the black, he may still be on this red, is he? No, he wasn't, didn't have enough of it, so just a safety. Foul. Ooh. Chris Wakelin, 35, Chuck Trump, 4. Oh, that's a mistake. The white was a little too steamy anyway. One good shot from Trump here, and the a whole feeling of the match could change. Mm -hmm. 
hasn't settled yet. Missed that black in the forest, missed the long red in this frame, and now that one, one, and particularly that one, Phil, it's, it's a shot that you'd expect them to get nine times out of ten. And of course, unluckily for Judd Trump, he's left it on. Easy starter for his opponent again. Oh, well, would you believe it? Would you believe it? I think he's covered it, but, well, another chance missed. We always say it because it's true. When you've got the top players a little concerned, you've got to maintain the pressure. One. Shot from one. Hasn't got the snooker. That's a tougher shot than it might appear. Always the chance when you're playing like that across the slate that the, the cue ball might get a slate line in banana away and miss the object ball completely. Very loose safety shot from Chris Wake. Not what you'd really expect from him. Straightforward that. Another half chance for Judd Trump. That's better. Two ball needs to slow up. One. Perfect. Six. When he knocks in this red, that will release 13. another red into the opposite left corner pocket. Fourteen. I think he played for the loose red. I'm not quite sure. I don't think the angle is good enough for him to go into the pack here. So maybe just play for that loose red. But he's going to need some sort of cannon on those five reds to try and win the frame from this visit. 21. He's got to develop at least one of those reds after this shot to try and keep the break going. It's not a great angle. Could try and power his way through with lots of top spin but that's a bit risky mm, that's no 22. good that's too short wanted to be top side of the blue so mm, this would be a, a wonderful shot in and out of bulk lots of right hand side two cushions no good missed the pack Twenty-seven. No one's better at going in and out of bulk in potting a blue than Trump. But he was off his positional mark there. So end of contribution. Trump. Twenty-seven. Yeah, I think he's he'll be disappointed. He missed the trick there. He could be in trouble. Good opportunity to hide this yeah, cue ball behind the yellow, but um, I think he's on this red over on the right hand side.
Yeah, good cue ball, but has left a possibility of a red into this left corner pocket. Got to be careful, doesn't hit the red on the right-hand side of the table on the way back. The ability to knock in that shot to nothing on a regular basis at this level is priceless. Because although it's a shot to nothing, it can lead to something, something big. Yeah, I totally agree, Phil. He knocks them in with such consistent regularity. Five. Wonderful long putter. And then, of course, when he gets in, he's devastating. One of the best break builders in the business. But he's going to have to work hard to win the frame Spot. from this visit. Red along the top cushion, and particularly that red that's towards that right cushion. He's going to need that as well. 13. So a little bit of work to do. Classic little kiss. Twenty-one. Yeah, this is the important shot now. Does he play behind the red, or does he try and knock the red out? I think there's room enough to go around the back of it, play behind it. Well, try to knock it out. Twenty. So good. I don't think it passes the yellow into the. Top left-hand corner pocket, so... Oh, well, maybe it does. There is room. There is room. He'll have a look. He's 25 ahead. Red in colour, but plenty of room for the red to pot. Well, he doesn't like it. But it's one of these... If he misses it... There's a Big possibility that he will get cover from the yellow. So he may not leave it on should he miss it. Well, a long way away. He's so far away, I think he might Shot have left it. It's potable, I think, into this right corner pocket. So what a chance. Just surprised, Phil, the way he played it so hard. He played it almost with an element of safety, but he could have played it a lot softer and give it a bit more than he did. Chance for Wakelin here. Oh. Well, maybe I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he wasn't on that red. He couldn't pot it. But maybe a Trump special coming up, another one of those shots to nothing with inbuilt safety. Oh, caught that so badly. No damage done, but that was a poor one. This might be a case of, well, 
cushion first. A little bit of right hand side on the cue ball. Knock the red. Just past the pink, maybe. Back up into the bulk area. No. Oh, has he left it? Is there enough room? No. He's got good cover, so good shot. And this is very easy to hit this red, but of course, the problem is getting it safe. Twenty-five in front, Trump, but he's feeling vulnerable. He would love a colour or two. Nothing safe. Played that very well. Perfect contact on the red. That's exactly what he played. Quarter ball on the red, knock it safe onto the left hand side cushion. Advantage though with Chris Wakelin at the moment in the safety department. Again, a lovely, delicate safety shot from Judd Trump. He's got cover on the black. Missed it. Foul, oh, and the miss. Judd Trump, four. And these are, you see Chris Wakelin, he's having a look at the scoreboard. I just want to make sure that He's got a, well, at least one more shot to play with. He's 29 points behind. So he could miss it once more, but he doesn't want to because then he would need either black or pink with the last remaining red. So it's important that he hits this red this time. Mm, no. Foul in the miss. Oh, it's hard to believe. It's amazing, for Phil, isn't it? A simple shot that Judd yep. Trump played side to side red cue ball got the cover on the black and well it could win him the frame if chris doesn't hit it this time penalties already accrued mean that trump only needs the last red yeah. without a color but he'd like to be the recipient of four more penalty points Well, at least from Wakelin's perspective, that is avoided. But the initiative tactically remains. <laughs> if he goes for the red up into the yellow pocket, he could get plenty of cover between blue, pink, and yellow. Oh, but this is the only way he could leave it on. If it hits, it gets it so close, misses it. And it goes over towards the green pocket. He's got a good cue ball, which means well, it's going to take some cueing. And of course, because of those penalty points, all of a sudden, he's 33 points behind. He needs pink or black here with this last red. It's certainly not going to be straightforward. One. 
Wyclin made the early running, but he also made a few mistakes, and they've come back to haunt him. Five. Seven. Yeah, he'd be disappointed because he was in early in this frame. Trump gave him an easy opener. He should have and Ten. probably could have made more from it. And there's that one little clever shot that Trump played well. It was the definitive shot, you would say, in this frame. And got him 14. the eight points and, of course, the big advantage. And it wasn't frame. the most spectacular frame that Judd Trump has ever played. But he's an all-round competitor these days, and he's back on level terms. Championship, the middle event of the ITV series. On table two, over on ITVX. Deng Junwei is taking on John Take Higgins, time. who won the first frame with a century break, the Scot. Chris Wakelin on table one. Won the opener here with a century but he's been pegged back by Judd Trump. Trump, who's trying to win this tournament for the third time. When Trump beat Wakelin 9-3 in the final of the Northern Ireland Open in Belfast, it meant he'd won three consecutive ranking titles after the English Open and Wuhan. Only the fifth player to do that. One of the reasons he can win in so many different ways. And in this frame, the way they're set up now, it could be via a big break, a very big break. One. I was going to say, Ken, you nearly won ranking titles back in the day, losing in the Scottish Open final, I recall. So you know exactly how difficult it is to do. What an achievement. Yeah, I mean, he's having a... Six. An amazing season. As I said, four major tournaments. Three other finals. He's becoming a dominant force himself. And Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course. He'll be sharing a lot of the spoils between them. And it's because of, yeah, not only, you know, his long potting, but it's his scoring power. Really. He just loves making century breaks. He's after the records, and, and that's one of them. 14. Close to 1,000 centuries, as you mentioned. And one of the few, well, 15. one of only two players, isn't he, Phil, himself, Neil Robertson, who've made a century of centuries in one particular season. I think that could be on the cards again this year, the way he's playing. Well, at one point, a personal best for Trump was looking good. He's only made 66. He slowed down in that regard. 22. And that wasn't the best positional shot either. One thing has led to another. 23. Well, he's not on the pink. He didn't accelerate through the pack as, as much as he would have liked. But he is on the black. And being a left-hander, he can certainly reach this. He doesn't need the rest around. This is cuttable. But once again, it's risky. If he misses it, he'll be leaving lots to, for his opponent. But hey, what a wonderful shot. He needs to slow up the cue ball. 30. Has it slowed up enough? Is he on? 
one is that red on the two reds that are very close together is the one on the right as we look is that on maybe just enough of it yeah no problem yeah, this cue ball is traveling 31 too much side too much power Stephen that's Hendry, before the match began, described Judd Trump as a serial winner, and that's why. Ten years ago, five years ago maybe, he might have chanced his arm. Now he's as hard as nails. Yeah, that's a good point. I think he's become, well, a complete all-round player now. Still loves to go for his shots, of course, but when the time comes when he has to play good safety or even contemplate safety he puts a lot more effort into it more conscious of it this looks a good line very good but very unlucky very unlucky and that's why it was the right decision for Trump not to take the, the difficult brown on but Play a good snooker, and well, now he's in with another wonderful chance. One. He's come to the realisation, Trump, the, the correct thought process that, that if you play good safety, you get more and better chances to do what you want to do, which is to score. Yeah, and I think... No, it's been well documented a few... A few Six. years ago now, he sort of made that conscious decision that to compete with the likes of the O'Sullivan's, Higgins, Selby's, this world that he had to play good safety. He wasn't going to just outpot them. and He had to learn the sort of the dark art of the sport in a way. And he has done, and he's done it very well. All those years ago when he said he wanted to play naughty snooker, that's been like a, a yoke around his neck in many respects. Doesn't play naughty snooker now, he's just extremely well behaved. Top of the class. I do like to see a little bit of naughty snooker now and again though. And particularly, he's on this red as you can see, as I sell that card just Make sure the pink is firmly on its spot. Yeah, I like the way, 14. you know, towards the end of the frame that he will put in those sort of exhibition shots, entertain the crowd, and that's what sport's all about. He loves doing it when he does it in style. Seven. That could have worked out more Touching agreeably. Ball. Touching ball on the red he's closest to. Yeah, just a little bit surprised he didn't play that cannon, just a little bit firmer. Still on this red into the right corner. A bit more of an angle than he would have liked. Kiss. 28. That kiss has stopped them continuing this break, I feel, and maybe maybe put the brown safe oh, if possible. 
A bit of insurance. He's got a 59 point lead. So Brown onto the right hand side cushion. And a good cue ball so tight 20. to the ball cushion. Yeah, nice pop, but just look at this little brush off the ground. Didn't want that, otherwise it'd be in and out of bulk. It would have been pretty good. Wakelin doing himself no favours by knocking another red. Really awkward. Over on table two, the second frame was really scrappy. Ding Wei won it, and so it's one each. Don't forget, if you want to multi-device and watch both games at the same time, you can do thanks to, thanks to our coverage of table two on ITVX. One. What a good pot. Is that the start of a wholesale transformation what? in the frame? Yeah, that was a wonderful pot, wasn't it? <laughs> Fully committed. If he misses it, frame over. Now, what's he going to play here? He's going to play just to drop the black in. I wonder, could he go in and out of balk? Off two cushions, maybe miss the yellow. Doesn't like it, playing it with top spin. Trying to knock the red into play, and he has done. Eight. Knew he was always going to be on. That's why he went back a couple of moments ago, just to check to see could he still pot this red from that position. I wonder, can he pot the red, maybe miss the other red and try and knock the red as close to the right hand middle pocket, away from the pocket. He tried it. Unlucky. Good effort. Nine. Has to take a low value colour though, and that means he's got less latitude when it comes to which colour he takes off the last three reds if he gets the chance. Eleven. Yeah, as you said, 48 points, so imperative he gets on the black from this red. Gets at least... Oh, well. Twelfth. He's under-hit that boy. A considerable amount. He really wanted to be straighter on this black. Look, there's almost like a little bit of a deceleration there. Mm. That's no good. I'm quite sure he can hold for the, the red on the just beneath the black. That was the telltale sign of being tentative, and that comes with being nervous. And consequently, even though the black goes in, position, or at least good position, is entirely surrendered.
Oh, he's taking the extension and extended rest there, but putting this red is not really good to him here. He may not take it on at all. Yeah, I don't blame him because had he potted it, the cue ball was going up, back up towards the ball Just carrier. Like Pink or black with, with this penultimate red, at least. There's a lot in Trump's favour here, but there won't be a grain of complacency. The last thing Trump wants to do is dislodge that red from the right-hand side cushion. But this is not a good shot because it gives well, Chris Wakelin, the chance not only to lay a snooker here, but maybe not boat reds out into the open. That was a terrible shot from Trump. Could be in trouble here. Oh, he said it too hard. Oh, no. <laughs> what a simple shot to play, and he said it too hard. He could have had Trump in all sorts of trouble there. Have a look at this. Bows his head in embarrassment more than anything and disgust. That was a shocker. <laughs> and that was frame ball. Traditionally, One. on ITV Snooker, we have the hot shots. That was the not shot. <laughs> Trump, though, taking no chances whatsoever. Wakelin, 41 adrift, 35 on, so he needs two snookers. Foul. So Trump, five, and the third frame. Chris Wakelin concedes. Unusual, this. Judd Trump in front with the highest break in the match so far of 31. Monday in Telford. Multiple cameras on multiple tables, all covered by ITV. If you employ multiple devices, ITVX, and you can see a cracking contest between Ding Junwei and John Higgins. The first frame with a, a century break. Higgins then losing the scrappier second. Everything to play for in the third. Oh, nice. John Higgins, four. As for table one, well, Judd Trump yet to lace up his scoring boots. Far from it. But in the last couple of frames, he's played hard match play snooker to good avail. As for Chris Wakelin, well, he made 120 break in the first frame. Since then, not so good, as he attempts to beat Trump for the first time in... 13 pro tournament meetings. Thank you, take your seats quickly now, please. The fourth frame. Chris Wetland to break. With those frames play tonight added in, in terms of frames won and lost between these two, it's now 67 for Trump, 29 for Wakelin. A big difference.
Yeah, hasn't reached the ball cushion. May have left this red. Well, he has. Mm, long way away. Started off so confidently, but just lost a little bit of his way at the moment. We play for the black here. Needs to slow up the cue ball. One. He's a bit unlucky. It was a wonderful pot. He played it with an element of safety, and of course, if it goes in, it could be on the black now. Well, he took the black on. No fear of it whatsoever. He's unlucky. That little bump on the middle pocket. But for it, Eight. he would have been on this red a lot easier. Trump eight. Yeah, not easy. Into the blind pocket. And particularly these middle pockets, the tightest pockets on the table. Not difficult at that. Very acute angle. Yeah. Another half chance for Chris Wakeland, red right up into the green pocket. No, he's played it into the middle. One. No, he's played it very well. Played it very well. Excellent pot. Badly needs to re-establish himself in the match. Oh, that's a wonderful positional shot. Excellent. Six. Couldn't apply that any better. Seven. Just have a look at this shot again. I mean, this is beautifully played. Off three cushions, one, two, three, and perfect on that red at the back of the pack. Wonderful shot. Oh, he's followed it up with it. Oh, the shocker. Absolute shocker, this. Got into the cue ball too much. He still may have a cut on this red, but, well, he's looking at a possible double as well. Into Looks good. 15. Cue ball, not so good. Chris Wakeland, 15. Try to make something happen.
one. Well, the player who put the pink there is going to benefit from it. Well, he's judged that very well. It's an easy to get the cue ball away from the pocket there. And beyond this red. Now, yeah, what does he play on here? Could play on blue or black. Can he hold it for the blue? Delicate little shot. There was a delicate little Which shot. He's tried to hold it for the blue. Got into it too much. He's got himself into some really good position. And these oh, first session of these these frames. And he's just apart from the first frame, fairly. He's made a lot of mistakes since then. I mean, he's had chances. Yeah, balls are being missed that qualify as a, a real surprise. And that was a, a positional surprise from Judd Trump Free. contacting the blue. We didn't see that coming. Four. Good recovery, but he's going to need something special here. He has the capabilities and, of course, his cue power, but he's going to need all of it here. To try and split these reds off the yellow. Has he got enough on it? Well, there's one. Six. This red is a potable into this left corner pocket. No. Just couldn't get enough on the cue ball to widen the angle. Split those reds the way he would have liked, so nothing he can do but a safety shot here. Early in his career, Trump just couldn't deal with the disappointment of running out of position. Now he just accepts it. Judge Trump six. And realises the best way forward is to play containing safety if there's nothing more attacking on. He just makes it. His opponent's life so much more difficult than he used to. You've been there, Ken. You know the way it works. When you have success, you're hungry for more, and he just builds and builds. Yeah, absolutely. And he's one of these sort of snooker animals you'd have to call him because of his, his appetite for success he's got an insatiable appetite as all the top players do and all the greats I mean, he wants to keep winning and bags one tournament it's forgotten about let's get on with the next one that's the attitude of the, the past champions the great champion stephen hendry steve davis before them ronnie o'sullivan very similar They don't waste time celebrating. Uh, they get back on the table and wait for the next one. I was going to say, nice target behind yellow here. That's what he was hoping for, but. And catch that red the way he would have liked. Now, yeah, can Chris Wakelin here pull out a good long pot? If he can do, we've got a great chance. Oh, that was close. And he would have been nicely on green or brown. And that was a red you 
he would have fancied. I just wonder, Phil, with his record, do you think maybe that that sort of the fact that he's playing Trump well, is it sort of hindering and slightly, you know, that it may be in the back of his mind that he's playing the player as opposed to just playing the table? Could be. Head-to-head -head records, when they're so lopsided, do have a psychological effect. But countering that, Jet Trump isn't playing well. Well, he just lost his cue action there completely. Normally so solid, but... Just, just the... the the amount of effort he put into it, it was just hit the balls so hard. And when you start hitting the balls this hard, you just lose your action. You just, you just wasn't confident in knocking that red in at all. He's got to trust his action out there. He's not doing that at the moment. He did it in the first. And since then, he's just lost his way a little bit. The paths of both matches tonight, identical. John Higgins won the first frame on table two with a century. Now he's 2-1 behind against Ding Junwei. Chris Wakelin on table one won the first frame with a century. Now he's 2-1 adrift. It's generally accepted that the benchmark for top-level snooker is 90% on success rate or better. Both of these two dipping below that at the moment. Once again, cue ball short to that ball cushion. Always a danger. Let your opponent put their hand on the table. This time, it's a good line, maybe between brown and yellow. Yeah, shot. <laughs> but he has left a possible pot here for Chris Wakelin. Similar shot. Cue ball back to bulk. He's got to avoid that black. He has done. Good shot. Now, is he on the brown? Maybe two. One. Hard for the brown, but he's certainly got the advantage here now. Could play a very telling snooker behind the yellow here. Would he well, shaping up to have a go at the screen. This is aggressive. <laughs> Leaving himself another long distance red. Five. Cue ball 
And these are slow, just about, and that little flick on the red. That was a lovely pot, but the flick on the red, well, it was even nicer. Let's have a look at this again. Eight. Nine. Yeah, let's have a look at this. Good part. But look at that little flick in the red. Wasn't that nice? Perfect. In that first frame break of 120, Wakelin was very precise with the cue ball. Needs to repeat that here. If he could get back to two all at the mid-session interval, it's a case of regroup and go again after the break. If it was 3-1 Trump, I think Wakelin might have a, a devil's own job of containing the top seed in the tournament. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. Anywhere but straight on this red will do. It looks pretty straight. I'm lucky there because that was a decent shot. He does have the cue power here, though. Maybe just playing it with a little bit of left-hand side, trying to get it out for pink 22. or black. But yeah, just not enough on it. So a little bit more of a difficult pink to the left centre. But the natural part of the cue ball will be going towards these reds over on the right-hand side. Ahead, so he's going to need. He pots the, the pink. One more red and black would be enough. So this could be virtually frame ball. Big shot. Lovely. There, how's the cue ball? Oh, he's unlucky. <laughs> Looks up to this ceiling, but this was a wonderful pot, and he's just that little flick on the red. If he misses that red, he could have been on. Well, the red into the left center or even into the top corner pocket. So big shot coming up. Twenty nine. Been a real curate's egg of a performance so far from Chris Wakelin. Outstanding first frame. Poor in frames two and three. 36. But he's accepted this chance. <laughs> With real aplomb, potted some cracking balls. Jetram needs a snooker. And now we know we're going to the mid-session interval, all square. He's done very well here. He's potted himself. 32. Into the interval by squaring things up once again. He's playing. This has been a wonderful break. A lot of good pots, a lot of good positional shots. Chris Wakelin, 42. Well played, Chris Wakelin. Yes, they go to the interval. Trump, when they resume, will be looking for a lot more fluency. Right now, he's being held by Chris Wakelin at 2-2.
break 31. Now, surely that's got to in increase if he's going to win this match. Quick to now, please, quite a chance. bitty. Thank you, the fifth frame. Match from his perspective. Wakelin, OK, Trump he's made mistakes, yeah, but he's made a century. And he won that fourth frame pretty handsomely. So here we go, second half. Remember, it's first to six. Now just to settle down now, please. He's had a couple of weeks off, as we know. The idea to come back feeling refreshed, but maybe he's also just lost a little bit of sharpness. There's still time, of course, but... This Wakeley, who's never beaten him in 12 previous meetings, must fancy his chances here. Yeah, I mean, I think Judd is a notoriously slow starter in tournaments. Often he gets better as the tournament goes on, but I don't think you can afford it at this level in this event with all these players. Top 16 on the one year, you know, to be that far off your game and expect to get through. But the point you made, I think, is that the fact that Chris Wakeland has never beaten the thing that might hold him back from doing so for the first time. Interesting to see how it develops from here. But as you say, Wakeland has scored better. Yeah, Chris Wakelin had a rather agonising day yesterday, of course, waiting for the result of the Welsh Open final. Had Martin O'Donnell won, then he would have overtaken him. Of course, Trump had no such worries. Top of the one-year list by some distance. sound very nice <laughs> horrible miscue He's done damage on the table and hopefully but not to his tip Once you, you have suspicious look down yeah. it's always a worry you know if you do miscue you, you almost don't want to look to see if there's a big chunk knocked out of your tip which can happen so what a chance for Wakelin to get going in the second half of this evening's One. match. It's not going to look any nicer, this, I think, for this replay. Yeah, I mean, they've taken their 15 minutes. No doubt Judd's brother, Jack, would have been trying to get him thinking straight and thinking better and comes out and miscues. <laughs> Could be a costly one. It's true Eight. what you say, though. Obviously, the dynamic here, Wakelin, with all those defeats, some of them pretty heavy, and actually a couple of close ones that were tough to take as well. He's got to get over that psychological barrier of actually beating Trump, but there's definitely a chance this evening. Nine. Fifteen. for that bottom red. There can't be leeway there, but it appears 22. that he's on it. Any further up the table, he wouldn't have been able to get to this red. They'd be nudging the other reds as well. He needs to get out of there onto a colour. I think the problem is... 
I think he's just going to clip the red above and slightly to the left of the red he's going to play. So it's going to throw the cue ball potentially off at an angle he can't be sure of if he plays to run through. And pace. The other red is definitely the better one. 20th. Not sure why he didn't immediately go to that one, quite honestly. The key will through the gap. It's a good shot. Well spotted beyond this red. 31. He does look a very good player when he's in. I mean, he clearly is a good player. <laughs> he's been in a ranking final this season. He's won a ranking final in the sh uh, shootout before, but he just looks the part out there when he's playing well. 's be getting more confidence the way this evening is unfolding tonight against a man who's never beaten 38 no reason why whoever it is sitting in the chair should affect you but it's not always like that this game yeah let's be clear quite a few of those beatings Trump outplayed him but he's not doing that this evening he's actually struggling a bit 39. Uh, just a little glance off the red, it was not planned, and now there's an extra degree of difficulty about this black to pot it and get a nudge on the red to be on one. So this could potentially go wrong. A while on this. It's not really the pot, it's more the uncertainty about the cube where the cube will finish. But he has to take the pot seriously as well. About a minute now since his last shot. You knew it, didn't you? There was something that he was Cross very uncomfortable with about the whole setup there. Pot and position. Didn't get either. Yeah, he didn't like it. It was the previous shot, wasn't it? He just flicked that red, left himself a kind of dodgy one. Mm -hmm. Took a long time to play it. Well, I was going to say, if he was trying to reach over, he would have almost certainly fouled that black with his waistcoat. He looks decidedly uncomfortable having to use the rest. He wouldn't need the rest usually. It's just the the black underneath him that's the problem. And Marcel Eckhart is just hovering around there knowing that that could be a problem for Judd. There he is. Nothing gets by him. Goodness me. That's a terrific shot. That, that really is, I think. Hard enough to use the rest when you One. need it, but he wasn't even really in that position on the table. Great shot. So maybe that one shot could just inspire something in Judd Trump this evening. Of course, his last visit was a miscue. But Chris Wakelin didn't really take advantage.
We last saw Trump in Berlin at the Temper Drum a couple of weeks ago, Fight. winning the German Masters. That was, of course, just after losing to Ronnie O'Sullivan in that World Grand Prix final. Off the back of four earlier finals, so he's had a very, very consistent year. Can't blame him for wanting to take a short break. But now we enter a very important phase of the season, of course. No, he doesn't like it. He would, didn't want to uh, have to use the rest of the long equipment on this, but the pot's not the problem. It's just the angle now. It's not so easy to get back towards the reds. I think he'd be able to. Might just be okay. There's something to the left corner. If it goes in, it opens up another 11. red. The one that's next to it. Twelve. That's very handy bump on the middle pocket and you could be absolutely in business now. Seventeen. Eighteen. Won this place championship as a ranking event four years ago in Southport. That was one of six ranking titles he won that season. Of course, he's already won four this season. Never know, of course, what would have happened had the world championship been in April as it should have been that year. We know why it wasn't. Had to be moved later in the year. Twenty-six. Well, taking the cue ball around the angles, it's very good at to get onto a, the next ball. So much top spin with great cue speed, he gets that cue ball zipping around 31. the angles. Very good shot there to avoid the. The pink on the way through, and of course, the yellow. Just looks at a bit more positive 32. in his ball striking now than he was earlier. Yeah, and his tip's clearly okay, isn't it? That was the concern, wasn't it, when he miscued? So I'm looking at it a little nervously. Thirty-seven. Well, landing in behind the black off this next red might be the way forward with the other red there into the opposite corner. Just a question of getting the right position on the black if he can. Getting almost straight on it. If he can't do that, it's going to be up for the blue. Again, sure. Thirty eight. You can see the shot again, I think, pumping the cue ball around the angles. Almost a mirror image of the one we saw. Almost exactly the same, anyway. How about that? How about that 43. for a shot? It's all about that wonderful 
cue speed that he has. And this is a good red to be on. I mean, it's the most difficult one. 44. He was happy to finish with this angle. This time, not around all of the cushions, the up and down, I think. Oh. Not part of the plan. That's enough. No, so he still might have made a half century here. Shot from 49. anything sticking out of the red I don't think he can cut it back but he, he might have been able to glance it it might have been good to him so the up and down is the alternative a little swerve perhaps doesn't look great to be in this position I'm sure you can get to this at all Good going off in the right corner here. Well, he hasn't done that. I think his next shot might be in the snooker as well. Shot on four. Not too much on it, surprisingly. Yep. Of course, you can watch table two live on ITVX. Ding has made a century there against John Higgins to lead 3 2. Both tables live for you from this players' championship. Saw Marcel Eckhart have a good look before he played the shot for this very reason. Have a look for me, please. Wow, well, it was dead on line, wasn't it? But Chuck just didn't Trump reach. Looks <laughs> very disappointed there. <laughs> Not Judd, but uh, Chris Wakeley. He played it well and they're finishing just that small amount short. He's got to go through the whole process again, as has the referee to put the ball back there. Clearly, a miss is the right yep. call. I mean, no one's arguing that. It just feels unlucky not to have hit, hit it already.
Well, when Judd is at his best, he will knock these in, albeit it's not an easy shot, but just off straight, he got slightly awkward queuing over the brown ball under his chin a little bit. Didn't really fancy it, did he, the way he's played it. Good cue ball, however. Very good. And the priority should have been really to get the object ball safe and clearly if uh, Chris Wakelin pots this he hasn't done it. It's an opportunity, half chance at least. Goodness me, I thought he hit that quite well. Yeah, and always the worst thing about getting that close, of course, the red stays very close to the pocket, which is what's happened. So Trump 18 in front. Here's the miss again, rattled the jaws, but stayed out. One. Well, it's all a bit congested here, isn't it? It's finished in the one place where nothing seems to go. Yeah. He screwed back into an area where either the blue or the pink are very possible, but not this time. He's got an absolute cert snooker if he wants to just play half ball on the green and finish it in that corner. Dangerous shot to play the swerve. I think he should just play a cert snooker here. Blue and green offer a big area of cover. Anything in that left side, no way in the world Wakelin can get to one. He'd be disappointed with the last shot, but. Now's the time to just wait for another one. That was That's a certainty, and uh, one. he just keeps the advantage rather than actually win the frame, at least. Yeah, he's not flowing tonight. He's having to show discipline. She's very close. Wow. Two. What about that? What a stroke of luck for Chris Wakelin. Crazy game, isn't it? He just missed that red, left it over the pocket, feels unlucky, and then gets that. Up and down is pretty good for getting on the brown ball. Big area to land in. He's not done it. He's thrown the cue ball Five. wide. Now he might have the same shot using the blue and pink, sending the brown down to the right side. Chris <laughs> Wakeley. <laughs> That's made things very, very interesting. Got hit, said he pots it, but how on earth does he hit it? Because those two balls of cover, they really are covering a very wide area. He goes straight into the left cushion, it's just horrible. This is where if you could play as you can in pull, the jump shot, get the jump cue out, you'd knock this in every time. 
Well, it's not permitted in snooker to jump over a ball and it become yeah. legal. This is a quite difficult one because there's no big target. It's not as if you can use all the cushions. And the other thing is he could hit this and the cue ball could follow it in. So either way, it's nasty. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. You saw the way that the cue ball veered across from right to left. Slid on the cloth. This is very good. It's a hard hit, this. Yeah, and obviously, if he doesn't hit it, he's leaving it on. So as it stands, Wakeling can only tie. He's 18 in it, 18 on. Chachan four. Yes, and you feel it's been the kind of frame, Dave, where we might easily get another twist. Might end up on the respot. That's not been in much control of things out there. As hard as he tried. I mean, that blue could have finished anywhere, couldn't it? It's run safe. And now... Fair few snookers on these colours. Again, Marcel Eckhart just looking in case black is struck first. He wants to be right on the scene. He's going to be needed for this. Oh, it Foul. is black. Goodness me. And a miss. Chris Wakeland, seven. Touching ball. Probably going to have to put it back, isn't he? I'm not sure what else he can achieve. The touching ball makes it interesting. I'm not sure how he can exploit that situation. I just think sometimes to avoid complicating things, put it back the way Judd was rolling into the blue. He'd still have a good shot, even if he hits it next time. Judd's got the problem here more so than Chris. Please. So it goes back. Take a little bit of replacement. Thanks. <coughs> yes, he's getting some assistance from Leo Scullion, the marker, who's got the freeze frame at his fingertips. But he refereed the final yesterday, didn't he, in Clan Didno, so uh, no rest, rest for the wicked. How's this, Leo? Um, about another quarter of a ball off the cushion. Tiny bit more, Martin. Yep. Yep. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Ask you. Back towards Judd. You know, I mean, it's, it's awkward. The black is definitely a distraction. This way, is it? Yeah, sorry, back. This is where, as I said before, but uh, if you watch a local league match, it seem to be it's about myself. 200 miles an hour, so nobody knows what was hit first out of Yeah, that's ball. not the right picture, is it? Because well, I got the cue really on my hand. Not really the way to do it. <laughs> we just do it between us, yeah? What's this, Judd? Yeah. About half a ball towards Judd. And tiny bit to the right. It's fine. Yeah, Chris. Thanks. Yeah. Well, we got there. I think two. Still anyone's frame. Eleven points in it. Eighteen on. Half an hour. This frame now. I was making, Dave, having it put back, you know, Judd can only roll to the blue and then there's always going to be Wakelin with the advantage there, so there wasn't really anything to think about. The replacement had to be right. So, right down the centre of the table, this cue ball. Four. 
I don't know if this table is quite as quick as the tables we saw Chris Wakeland, in North Wales last week. It just looks a little more to me. I'm not playing on them, like they're just pulling up short. Yep, Chris. Eventful frame, this fifth one. Absolutely snookered again. It's just a question of how difficult the snooker's going to be. That's helped Judd a lot because he was uh, just the last few shots under a lot of pressure, but at least he's released it with that escape. Yeah, of course, he had that last red to the green pocket, which he potted. Didn't get on a colour. They were kind of all in one another's way. Played the snooker, waggling flute, the yellow. A lot's happened since then as well. Frame of snooker this. Evil's close. <laughs> See, it's pretty much full ball. Yeah, we had the option to uh, roll up to the blue. The only thing that could save him, it goes tight against the cushion. Which is not quite done. It's quite a thin cutback, though. It definitely cuts in, but it's very thin and he has no control over the cue ball. And with regards to getting on the pink, I just think he'll play it and hope for the best, actually. He's running away from the pink in potting this. It's quite well controlled, in fact. But the frame Five. refuses to end. And he's still not there. Does he play to double it into the, the middle pocket close to him? It's kind of a, almost a back double. The keyboard is this side of it. Pink a little bit. He's playing it. And he gets it. What a frame. What a frame to win. Full of twists and turns. 34 minutes. Judd Trump had to dig deep. But he has got the reward and he edges in front here. 3 2. Chris Wakeland to break. Day one of Snooker's Players' Championship, the second leg of the Players' Series. And Judd Trump, who of course was runner up in the first leg, the World Grand Prix has edged in front in a bit of an epic duel here with Chris Wakelin. Trump's still not made a half century, but he leads 3-2. It's best of 11. It's true that he does start slowly. He says this himself in tournaments, and, of course, sometimes that means he goes out. It happened last year in this tournament. He lost a real nervy one to Ali Carter, 6-5. That's more like it. His long potting was 30% before that, but that was beautifully controlled. He's on the black, so this could now maybe be the start of something in terms of scoring.
Eight. Nine. But he won the German Masters. He looked a certainty to become the second player to a thousand centuries after Ronnie O'Sullivan. But sitting out the Championship League and the Welsh Open, John Higgins doing but well in both of those events. Higgins actually now it's on 16. nine eight nine for his career. Disappointing, isn't it? Or is he on it? Looked for sure that he wasn't. No, he's okay. I thought he was stuck to the other end. It actually worked out better than ever because he could get to the centre of the cue ball and, and half stun it in. So that was okay. Just made it on the red straight enough to stay 32. for the black. And I think he'll stay on the black for the moment. He hasn't got the angle to go through the bunch, not that he would have played that anyway, but he has got the angle to get onto the black, but then black stunning to reds. That will be the key shot, the one that follows this next one. Forty-one. Over top spin here, the cue ball will always arc left to right into the bunch as we look at this spin. It's nice to think he could stay on the black in this break. Now I think it's just a question of red and any colour from here. Red to the middle, it's a very acute angle. So he's a bit unlucky. I thought he played it well enough. He need luck on that. Yeah. Doing the right thing. Managed to win here. Trump Trump saying that the next maximum on tour will be the 200th in snooker history so whoever makes it it'll be a milestone He's taken the only safe red out in playing that safety shot, so he's thinking fairly clearly about getting back into this frame.
again, that stopped a little short. Wanted to be underneath the cushion, net, just a tempter to the right middle, the Wakelin, but failing that, an easy safety shot. Back in Telford, the last uh, major event here was the 2010 UK Championship. Won by John Higgins, of course, who's on table two this evening, playing Ding, who beat him in the final of that tournament, actually the year before, 2009. And, of course, the fans didn't know until last night who was... because the cut-off was the Welsh Open. But a good crowd in already on the opening night. Course you can watch Ding and Higgins, who are 3 3 currently live on ITVX. Table 2, which is um, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, full coverage there with Joe and Michael. Absolutely dead straight into the right corner. We're just down the line of it. He looked at it, but he doesn't obviously think he's playing well. Look how that is absolutely dead straight. It'd be the kind of shot that someone like Chris Wakeler would practice a lot, but he's not prepared to take it on because it's clearly a difficult shot. Simple as that. I don't know if that was much easier, but he has got a slight element of safety. Although playing Trump, I'm not sure you're ever out of the woods. Obviously he's capable of knocking in when he's playing well. Forty eight in front already. Feel one good pot. Can well be four two. You could see Wakelin just sort of peeping around there and he saw Trump knock that in very cleanly. I think that's the point, isn't it? He refused the long straight red and I understand why. But he, in favour of a shot with the defensive aspect to it. They missed the pot and it wasn't safe Eight. anyway. And these half and half shots which we all play over the years, you don't get them Mine. very often because you're always thinking about the cue ball getting out of attacking position for safety and yet Judd nonchalantly rolled the red in anyway so he won that epic 16 fifth frame 34 minutes and came out really firing in this one gone 17. in with the long red made 48 had to play safe but and for the first time he's going to be too clear and the danger now is that he really does take full control once again This is Frame Ball. 24. You do get these one sided head to heads. I think 31. the most one sided maybe was uh, Stephen Hendry against Terry Griffiths. It was something like 17 mil to Stephen. Terry was a great player, he was world champion, just couldn't beat him. <coughs> 
35. Trump looking to extend the record against Wakeland, of course, to 13 mil. Yeah, it's pretty resounding, isn't it? It's been mentioned before, but that World Championship match was the one, wasn't it? And Wakeland said it took him an age to recover. 39. That defeat where he really did throw it away a little bit in the deciding frame. At the crucible of all places. 40. That was then, and he has not beaten him since. It's a worrying head to head. And I think not winning that last frame. You know, it's the close frames that, he, that hurt the most, 47. I think. 47. And the frames like this one, he's not really had a look in. 48. Certainly the next one's going to be big. Wakelin needs to win it, surely, to stand any chance. Trump's just starting to look a bit more relaxed now. Trump, so, for the first time, Judd Trump is two frames clear, and he's two frames away from the quarterfinals of this Players' Championship. He leads Chris Wakelin here in Telford by four frames to two. Judd Trump, is he making his move? He still hasn't had a half century, but he's two frames away from the quarterfinals. On the other table, they are deep into frame seven. It's 3-3 between John Higgins and Ding Junhui. Higgins missing a long red there, so not much in this frame. You can watch it live on ITVX. Just six points in it. There's been some good stuff here. But they're set for a dramatic finish. The head-to-head -head was pretty much level between them, so not much to choose between them. Higgins has played some terrific snooker this season. He was in the semis again just at the weekend in Wales. Of course, Ding runner-up to O'Sullivan at the UK Championship. And that continues live on ITVX. All Table 2 matches are available on that platform. Just waiting for Chris Wakelin to return. Big frame for him. Here he comes. Must win frame, you feel, really. Thank you. Take your seats, please. The seventh frame. Judge on the break. Saw a moment ago, a couple of hours have been playing, and they've played matches of a, a higher standard than this in the past. Judd's won them all, as we know. But he hasn't quite won this one yet, you feel, not the way he's playing. He's a bit in and out, better than he was. Still no 50 break, although he's been close three times. So he's not vintage Judd Trump or anything like that. He's got a match to win tonight, and if he can, then you feel that, as ever, he'll be better for the, the match and for the, the experience the out there on the main table here in Telford. Just something on the red ball, he's just asking Marcel to clean it.
Well, we started the night with a re-rack and they're looking at each other. Eyes are meeting across a crowded room. A couple of smiles. Jad has sort of turned the re-rack re down there. But I think he's open to persuasion. And a couple more shots. It's not a, a typical stalemate in, in that there's not really a you know, ball. Usually the reason these things happen. He might just be able to open things up a bit by playing this shot. Took part in the, the latest ever re rack in a match against Matt Selt in China a few years ago. It was on pink and black. Two balls sort of got wedged in a pocket and they were just playing thin off the pink constantly. And in the end, they said we could be here forever. So <laughs> started the frame again. And Chris will tell you, Matt Selt knocked in a long ball, made a frame winning break when they re racked. Maybe Trump wishes to take it now. Although this is going to be one thin cut on the black. Yeah, because the black's not on his spot. That makes it even worse. It's almost like he probably played you know, to get on the black on its spot, but it's a few inches above the spot. So now it's more difficult. Yes, he's going into the bunch, but you could easily miss this black. Balls are going everywhere. Nothing was potted though. A red Chris or a black. Wakelin. One. Yeah, it's a horrid shot. He took it on. You can't blame him for playing the shot. But look at. I mean, if you watched that five times, you'd see a different thing happen, wouldn't you? Balls going in all different directions. Be very costly that one on his colour perfectly. Does the brand even go to the middle? I think it does. Yeah, it sort of feels like. Five. Keys to the sweet shop territory, this doesn't it for Trump, the leading scorer of this with his chance for 5 2. Six. Yeah, I mean, it really is a, an absolutely Guilt has chance this. Can't ask for any more. Red's in the middle of the table, high value colours all 12. in play, albeit not on their spots. Seventeen. Twenty three. I think you programmed that when the black is on its spot, you know the shot, but it was just off its spot, which made it a slightly different challenge. A challenge that did not work out, and he's left all of these. Goodness, it, the reds were just opened up. 31. And left in all places on the table. Thirty-two.
There's no doubt he started slowly tonight. The fifth frame was big, he sort of scrambled over the line in that, looked more composed in the last, and now he's going about his business here. 40. Trying to get to within one of victory. The winner plays either Tom Ford or Ali Carter in the quarterfinals. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Well, this pink will be for his highest break of the night so far. Only fifty-four, but looking to end the match on a high, having started a little sluggishly. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Yes, he's bedding himself into the event now. You know, he's got the luxury of being able to do that. Two, he wasn't playing well and he could have been easily behind. But the fact that he wasn't, I think, gave him the chance to just get into the match before it was too late. 60. He's on the brink of to being within a frame. 61. Yeah, already smoother required here. So waiting really in the mire now. 66. Yep. Trump's made 66 centuries so far this season. Could still get to 100 for the campaign. There's a lot of snooker left to play in. Be in the Tour Championship, of course. Indeed, he'll be in the mixed doubles just before that. Ah, he's not made one here, though. He's missed the brown. But Trump, he's over the line 67, with his highest break friend. of the night so far. 67. Chris Wakelin took on that black. It was do or die. He was always splitting the reds. He didn't get it. Trump has pounced. And Judd Trump is one from victory, leading by five frames to two. Two legends there, John Higgins on table two. He's Thank four three up friend. against Ding Junhui. It's live on ITVX and here on ITV4, Judd Trump leads 5-2 against Chris Wakelin and he needs one more to reach the quarterfinals of the Players' Championship on the opening night. So Wakelin staring down the barrel here. He's scored one point in the last two frames. And this is not the best of starts, is it? The red coming back up the table needs cover. Well, he has cover, but more by luck than judgment. Well, once again, he needs cover. I don't think he's got it this time. Ooh, maybe he has just. He could perhaps...
put a bit of trace of right hand side on to get to it but even then it's not hanging over the pocket I mean he's got to move the red so he might still play it with the side and I don't know hope for the best definitely needs a little bit spin on the ball here that's what he's doing going to the right of the cue ball one very nice very well controlled it doesn't look like a particularly great chance at this stage. Nice judgment, this. Didn't go without just a little bit. Right-hand side put on the ball. Now, I don't know whether the pink is available or not. There might be a plant to the left corner, so he takes the pink. He has to watch one thing, though, because if he does put the pink, where is it going to go? Is it going to go right in the way of whatever he wants to take? That's why he was looking at the bottom of the bunch. So blue it is, round the angles. It's quite clever, that, because I think he was going to play the pink and then realised it would block off Six. what he wanted to the left corner by going behind his own spot. So he's thinking well, anyhow. Not played with his best tonight by any means. This red would not have gone. Seven. So it's early in the frame, but this is a definite chance, certainly, 14. to build up a nice lead, potentially get it killed off. Fifth frame looking back was big, wasn't it? 15. It was a very sort of disjointed affair, quite dramatic. I mean, Wakelet at one point flew the yellow out of a snooker, but Trump just kept his discipline, got it won, and he really motored since. This is where he's such an inventive player. You know, he's, he's short and he's going onto the bunch here. Trying to open them up in pulling the red. Sometimes goes on that. Now he may not have the immaculate cue ball control of Ronnie O'Sullivan or Ding Jun Wee on the next table. But he's so good at making balls potable, opening up chances. And also, when he doesn't get on something, his rate of recovery on shots. 28. The best I've seen. Now, this break's been a little bit around the houses already. He's still going. Twenty nine. Nicely done. That's perfect. 34. You feel that this match might be going for much longer, the way things have changed. That frame after the mid-session was the one, wasn't it? Long frame. Both players really had their chances to win it. Even on the colours, it was a bit of a seesaw. But now, they've broken free in this match. 42. Yeah, and I think what he'll feel if he does win it here is significant that he has improved as the match has gone on. It hasn't just been a stumble through affair. He's grown stronger in the second half for sure. Has a chance to end with a frame winning break. Fifty. moment next season's 51. champion of champions he's looking a bit threadbare we've got judd here we've got ronnie we've got of course gary wilson mark allen who won the tournament they're sort of monopolizing the trophies of late
been good to see him playing well again this season. He didn't have the best of campaigns last year. That's all in the past. He's uh, obviously found something very special during this campaign. Fifty nine. Almost there. Six. Red and a color. He's best for last here. It was a really good opening red, the little swerve. And he's, he's a typical Judd Trump break, this. Didn't look like there was much on. He played a really good shot to get on the only red. But off that blue, he didn't take the pink because of course, pink would have blocked that red off when we spotted. So that was clever. So he's uh, thinking 73. He's proving all over the course of the evening. He took a break. And uh, you know, he might want to put some hours in before his next match because he's going to win this one now. But of course, he'll be a formidable player this player this championship. Well, the high break prize here is £10,000. So he can set a useful target here. There's been a 1 2 5 80. on the other table. In fact, he's just been beaten by Ding 1 2 7. So he's just got up in the last few seconds. But Judge 81. Trump can beat it here. Either way, He's ended in style, hasn't he? He's really dominated these last three frames. Now, I really like this break, though. You know, this one especially is just a level up from anything else he's shown. And what a nice way to finish the match and take in the, all the positives of it. OK, Chris Wakelin, his record against him is poor, but 96. early on he wouldn't have necessarily known that. He was very much in the match. 97. So this black to end with a century. His highest break at the interval was only 31, but he was 2-2. Second half, though, he's been superb, and it's a grandstand finish from Judd Trump, who can set a good target now for the tournament high break. There's still 35 points on the table. 105. Yeah, it'll be a benchmark. I do think there'll be something with 140 plus in there, but uh, until that's done, if you've got 139, someone's going to have to beat it. Of course, this tournament last 112 season, Sean Murphy sort of kept better in his own eye break, didn't he? I think he had the top five breaks in the tournament. Not here this year. 14. <laughs> Judd Trump was always going to be with the early season success he had, winning those three. Ranking titles in a row and won another one since. Been in seven finals all told. And you suspect more to come before the campaign is out. Chris Wakelin was delighted to get in the tournament. It was in the balance yesterday. But of course, when he saw the draw, his heart would have sank because it's 13th time unlucky against Judd Trump. 132. It was ended here with a terrific break. 139, a total clearance to end the evening for Judd Trump. It's <laughs> yet another victory over Chris Wakelin. It was in the balance, the fifth frame was big, and since then he has pulled away in style. So Judd Trump, the first man into the quarterfinals of the Players' Championship, he's beaten Chris Wakelin 6-2, and all the reaction is coming up next.